We come today tonight to bow our heads and open this meeting with prayer. We ask that you would bless our time together today. May we grasp those things that you want us to understand, and may our hearts always be ready to respond to you and your wisdom. We also ask that you keep our community and its citizens safe. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Cook and Ms. Ebear. We welcome you to the City Council meeting. As presiding officer and chair, I would like to announce the following. This is a public hearing to address the council on any item on this agenda. Please fill out the speaker form or call in to 291-8428. 291-8428 to submit your information to the clerk prior to the call of the agenda item or you will not be given the opportunity to speak. Staff assistance is available if needed. Items for submission to the council should be handed to Council Clerk Ms. Veronica Williams, seated to my left in the middle. When addressing the council, state your name and title for the official record. The five-minute rule will be in effect. No debating or confrontational statements will be allowed. The front row to my left is for media only. Food and drinks are not allowed in the auditorium. Please silence all phones and electronic devices. Meeting procedures are by resolutions and not by Robert Rules of Order. All documents with reference to meetings can be found on the LCG website. And finally, the council encourages y'all involvement in boards or commissions. If interested, call 291-8800, 291-8800. If you call 291-8428 to place your name on the list, you will be con contacted to speak during the public comment portion of the agenda item for which you sign up to speak. Absent, Glenn Lazard, District 5, item number 5. CO-064-2020, final adoption. Short-term rental has been deferred indefinitely as per development and planning. Item number eight, nine, and 10, bond ordinance. Amendments have been submitted by bond councils to insert a dollar amount for each ordinance. Item number 11, CO-076-2020, LCG City Millage Ordinance. Councilman Liz Hebert is requesting deferral for two weeks to allow more information on the millage adjustments. As per state law, the millage will be read in full. Due to Hurricane Laura, the wrap-up session has been rescheduled to September 3rd from August 27th, and final adoption of the budget was rescheduled to September 17th from se September 10th. I do not have any council chair announcement. Uh, council announcement, any council wish to make a, have an announcement? Let's see, so I see there's none, okay. Executive Mayor report. Uh, Mayor, do you have a report you want to like to give? To the city council, the budget to actual comparison, comparison of major funds uh, for July 2020 preliminary has been submitted to each council member. And if you have any questions, Director Toops is behind me. And not seeing any, any questions, um, this will be the third time that we, we make this acknowledgement tonight, but I think it's important as our community is healing. And there'll be some people that fast forward to just the city council. So I want to take this time to to acknowledge uh, once again, and we can't do this too many times, the grief of a family who has lost a son, a brother, a nephew, a cousin, and a friend. If I, if I could have the council's attention just real quick, Mr. Chair and Ms. Haber, I, I, I know you didn't hear me when I said that, but no. this is such a, a serious issue that I, I do think it deserves everybody's attention, and that's the, the loss of Trey for Pellerin as we're, we're grieving as a community. I, I, I'm not calling you guys out, just I, I don't want to, again, we're fast forwarding, <laughs> and, and people might fast forward to look at this, but I know you guys feel what I'm, what I'm about to say, and um, no matter where you fall on, on what's going on out there, okay, because it, it's, 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 it can be viewed as chaos to some, 
But there are certain things that we can all agree on, and that is a family that's grieving. And I just want us to take a time, again, to acknowledge the grief, acknowledge the pain. But if you could join me in prayer once again for tonight for the soul of Ta- uh, for, for Mr. Pell- Pellerin, but also for Trayford's family and all those that are grieving with them, to include our community. Please join me. Thank you. Also to the city council, uh, just a quick update on, on the, from our perspective. Um, so I have spoken with state police and the district attorney's office. Uh, I have relayed, I've also spoken with a lot of leaders of the community and I've relayed some concerns of the community as expressed to me to these two entities, the district attorney and the state police as, as I promised. Um, I've respectfully asked that sufficient resources be allocated for a timely and thorough resolution of the process. A lot of this stuff is outside of our control, but to the extent that they can allocate resources to expedite, they have promised to do so. Um, As the council knows, it's important in these situations that we not interfere with the work of the district attorney, the work of the state police. Uh, as, as we want an independent investigation free from interference. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, that's the only, that's the only update I have to the, to the tragedy surrounding Trayford's death. Um, and as I get more updates, I, I will present them to the council. Also, to, uh, there's been some questions in regards to, the, to my June 26th um, emergency order in regards to congregating downtown. And I just want to clear up any confusion. So my June 26 order against congregating downtown was implemented as a measure to reduce the spread of COVID-19, especially around our younger generation that would gather downtown. This order has been in place for well over two months, two and a half months going on. And it was extended recently to September 15th to coincide with the end date of the most recent phase two proclamation of the governor. And earlier today, and we won't go through every department unless you want to, (laughs) we did acknowledge many of our LCG staff that responded to Hurricane Laura. We are working with other communities across uh, southwest Louisiana uh, to help and assistance uh, utility and other relief. I just, matter of fact, I was just communicating with uh, Mayor Nick Hunter from Lake Charles here about an hour or two ago. And... um, just very proud of our, our employees of Lafayette Consolidated Government. Can't say enough. So we'll spare the introductions. And, and, but I know you guys were watching the Parish Council. Y'all saw that. So <laughs> that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Appreciate you. Honored to serve with each of you. Okay, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that. I appreciate the kind words you say for Trayford and the Pellerin family. That's very nice of you. Appreciate that. Um, okay, let's move along. Ordinance for, I'm sorry, Liz, you had something to say? I'm sorry, Ms. Ebert, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I have a question. I did make a motion to, or I contacted the council office to be able to defer the conversation for item 11, but I wanted to see if I could remove my deferral. I want to take that back because after learning more and getting more information and talking to my council members individually, we've all determined there's not a need for a deferral. We just want to move forward with that. So that's item number 11. Yeah, and I've, I've spoke with legal beforehand, and he said there wouldn't be an issue, but I just wanted to make that public for the record. Number 11, we will be moving forward tonight. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Ordinance for final adoption. This is public hearing, and speak of form are available for anyone wishing to address the council. The five-minute rule does apply. I'd like to remind everyone that item number five has been deferred indefinitely. Item number five. Item number 12 is being moved up per chair privilege. Cindy, please read item number 12. City Ordinance 77 2020, in order to the Lafayette City Council, authorizing the hiring of a special counsel to represent the City of Lafayette in its dispute with the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government Administration regarding the proper interpretation and implementation of the joint decision rules in the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government Home Rule Charter. Okay, I need a motion and a second. Motion by Ms. Cook. Second. Second by Ms. A. Bear. Any council discussion? Mr. Nakin. Uh, I'd like to call up uh, 
Mr. Greg Logan, if that's possible, please. He's available. There he is. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Uh, I understand that there is a need for this and clarification and in moving forward, the advantages that it could be for the city, but is this being handled in the proper manner and is it within the charter uh, requisites that what we're doing with this ordinance, Mr. Logan? Do you see that? No, it's in direct violation of the charter. It's in direct violation of a Louisiana Supreme Court case on point. It's in violation of a federal uh, case on point dealing with the city of Alexandria. So it, the charter is the law of the land and the charter does not allow for the council to hire special counsel without the legal department providing that special counsel. That, that's the specific in the charter? Yes. Which well, set? as interpreted by case law. Okay, as interpreted by case law. So basically this ordinance is not valid. Correct. You can't overrule a charter provision with the ordinance. If you want to change a provision in the charter, you have to go back to a vote of the people. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Questions I have at this time. Uh, I know where I'm voting. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, I have a question. Mr. Logan, you just said something about Alexander. There's a law, but our charter, I'm, I'm talking about Lafayette Charter, not Alexander Charter, Shreveport, New York. We're talking about Lafayette Home Rule Charter. It states on that that the council has a right to hire an attorney for specific needs, for specific needs, not an attorney for full time. Then again, I must remind you, is your opinion, and your opinion is stating Alexandria law, not Lafayette Home Rule Charter. From my understanding. My opinion is based on a case a interpreting case. Right. a very similar, if not identical okay. position. One thing okay. I've learned mm -hmm. is the charters are a lot of home room rule charters in the state are almost verbatim. They all come from the mm -hmm. same source. Okay. Okay. Then again, we talking about Lafayette home rule charter. Correct. We're not asking opinion from Alexandria home rule charter. Shreveport Home Rule Charter, we talking about Lafayette Home Rule Charter. That's why we need our own special counsel for Lafayette, City of Lafayette, because your opinion is overall opinion, not Lafayette. If you read Lafayette Home Rule Charter, it says, it states on there, Mr. Nakin, it states on there that Lafayette Council can hire the special counsel for the consulate for Lafayette. It says on there. That's not what it says. What does it say? Well, no, 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 that's what it says. <laughs> That's what I'll it read it to you. Well, no, you, 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 you are you reading Lafayette Home Rule Charter? Yes. Read it. Section 403E, no special legal counsel shall be retained by the city of Lafayette, the parish of Lafayette, and or the city parish government except by written contract for a specific purpose approved. Right. Approved. Right. Approved. By approved. the favorable vote of the majority of the authorized membership of the city council. All right, to be the city council. Or the we are the council. city we are approved. the city council. Approved. We approve. That's what we wait for approval. We are about to vote on it. We are about to vote on it. So what you are suggesting is something different that you just read it. Approved by the city council. You I just represent, read it. I represent this council and I represent you. Well, and I'm telling you it is an illegal act. Mm -hmm. You may vote on it. Yes. You may sign the ordinance. Yes. That's the ultra virus act. That's right. That's right. It is malfeasance in office. There's well, an attorney general opinion on that. And you will not have indemnification from Lafayette Consolidated Government. The people of Lafayette voted on the Home Rule Charter. Correct. That's what they voted on. So now it's up to the council. Right now, us four people, because one is short, we are right now, that's what we are getting ready to vote on it. We're not asking about Alexander's opinion. We saying that we're getting ready to vote on this ordinance in the next few minutes. Next few minutes. And that's what it said. You just read it. The approval of the council. A you just read it. You have to take that in context. Well, with everything the is in context, sir. We need to vote on this. Let's vote on this, please. Call I caution vote. you again. You are violating the law. You will not have indemnification. And proceed. Thank you. 
Ready to vote, please? District 1? Yes. District 2? No. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. Thank you. City Ordinance 7. Wait, hold on. You went so fast oh. that we didn't call, for, you didn't call for public comment. Oh, public comment, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we got to kind Council of back discussion. up. And um, I need to make a call. There are two speakers. Sorry. Okay. Call, uh, what's his name? Okay. Mr. Uh, Will Teeley is the next speaker. You may begin speaking. Uh, hello, my name is Will Teeley. I live in City District 2. Councilman Andy Nakin represents me, so thank you to him and thank you to the whole city council. I had a speech written for this, but I'm so flabbergasted by what just happened, it's completely moot. I, I feel like the administration has declared war on the city of Lafayette. I'm, I have the Home Rule Charter open right now on page 24. You can hire special counsel. I don't know what I don't know how you can interpret this to say you can't. I'm, I'm dumbfounded by the legal advice that you're getting by the city parish attorney. And I'm now terrified that this administration and the city parish attorney combat the city council and the city of Lafayette so aggressively. I don't. I, I don't know what to say. You need to hire your own legal representation. Um, uh, I, other than that, I would like to say that I just support this through the entire budget process. I feel that the parish council unfairly exerted um, influence and control over what was clearly city-only matters. Things like objecting to budget amendments that were city-only budget amendments. And because of all of this, it left us with a budget that unfairly favors parish priorities above city priorities. And that's not fair. These two councils have to come together, meet in the middle, give a little, take a little, to come up to an agreed upon budget. But that wasn't done at all through the budget process. Um, so absolutely, we need to, to, to we need our legal representation, and I beg the Lafayette City Council, what you just witnessed is no clear indication why you cannot sign any budget at all until you have a court order that says that you and only you will respond to a budget amendment that deals with city-only millages. Because the administration will veto it, and the city parish attorney will cite nonsense interpretations at you, and you'll lose all control over city tax dollars. The city council do not sign any budget until you have legal representation. I'm, I'm dumbfounded. Uh, thank you for letting me speak, and please vote in favor of this. Have a good night. Thank you. One more speaker. Next speaker is Jared Eubanks. You may begin speaking, Mr. Eubanks. Good evening. My name is Jared Eubanks. I'm a resident of City District 2, Mr. Andy Nockham's district. I am calling tonight to ask you to vote in favor of this ordinance. There's probably not one of you I agree with on everything when it comes to this budget, but this is how representative democracy works. 
and I appreciate the service of each one of you. I respect that we have different views and concerns on this council working to define budget priorities of Lafayette, even when we don't agree. Andy, you as my representative, this is almost certainly true of you and I. I doubt we will always agree. But one thing we can always agree on, you represent the citizens of our great city. Not only that, but you represent taxpayers. You are our fiduciaries, a role I'm sure you do not need me to impress upon you the significance of. But what does that really mean? It means you give control of your money to someone. If you were to give your money, control of your money to someone, would you take that lightly? Would you be fine with them spending it in whatever path has the least resistance? Or expect them to exhaust all reasonable avenues to make sure that it is being used in a way to best benefit you? I'm asking you to fight to make sure our tax dollars are being spent in a way that best represents us, the taxpayers. I admit it will be a fight. In an ideal world, the role you had would be respected and understood by all parties, and this should be a time of only thoughtful reflection and weighing of priorities. This isn't how it has played out, unfortunately, and that has been no more evident than earlier tonight, just now. You have the added responsibility of defending your control over city tax dollars coming under attack. Hiring an outside legal counsel doesn't resolve all of these issues, but it puts you in a place, a fair playing field. I ask you this on behalf of taxpayers in the city of Lafayette because I know I'm not alone. I knocked on hundreds of doors and had hundreds of conversations during Fix the Charter. Literal hundreds, not figurative. I spoke in front of several of you on more than one occasion. I intended multiple town halls, including one of Mr. Pat. City representatives controlling city tax dollars was the primary reason this passed. There were concerns and contentions regarding the um, charter change, but this one message is what rang clear, rang clear through all of that noise. It has been clear to the public that the independent administration of city funds by the city is all but non-existent. When the city cannot even allocate an extra 100000 from their general fund to a service completely funded by the city tax office, we have a problem. It has also been pointed out that there are serious legal concerns regarding this. Concerns regarding clauses in the charter speaking directly to line item amendments or budget items paid for entirely by one fund or the other that we have not heard the city parish attorney speak to. Let's be clear. I don't blame them. It's ridiculous to ask them to fairly represent both parties at a negotiation. This not only protects the city council, but our city parish attorneys, who I think are being put in a position that is ethically murky, regardless of their intentions. Oh, he must have disconnected. He's gone. Um, we did have um, eight citizens who did not wish to speak, who all signed in and supported the ordinance. Thank you. Okay, call for the vote, please. District 1? Yes. District 2? No. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. City Ordinance 71 2020 in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending the fiscal year 1920 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to adjust amounts for administrative and general costs to actual. I need a motion and a second, please. Motion by Ms. Cook, second by Mr. Notkin. Ms. William, any public, I mean, any council discussion? I see there's none. Any public comments? Okay, vote on the council to adopt the ordinance. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 1? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. City Ordinance 72 2020, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Council, authorizing the Lafayette Mayor President to enter into a contract for alarm program administration with PM. AM Corporation. Motion and second, please. Motion by Mr. Nykant, second by Ms. Cook. Any uh, council discussion? Ms. Abair. Thank you. Um, is Chief here to speak on this? Who's the best person to speak on this issue? Alarm? I'm assuming it's the... Thanks, appreciate it. Okay. I guess maybe while we're waiting for him to come out, you may be able to answer. Was this put out to bid? Is that true? Okay. Any 
It doesn't matter. They're both clean. And you make Sidra live Sidra? as well. Yeah, basically, it's uh, introduce yourself, Chief. Oh, I'm sorry, interim chief Scott Morgan, uh, Lafayette Police Department. It basically this is a program that works um, with our CAD system. So when alarm calls come in, we don't actually have to use a personnel to make all the forms and all of that. So it's more automated. So the company itself would actually disperse the uh, any time a false alarm came in, comes in, they would send out any notices, any bills. Uh, if there's a fine, then they would collect the fines. And then they would do the disbursement between the police department and us for fines. So basically, they do all the middle work for us. Okay, so give me an example of what a false alarm. I know, what, like, obviously, if I have a home alarm, there's a false alarm and I get fined for that. Is that the same thing here? What's an example of a false alarm and yeah, why so would we, they get fined? It, whether it's a, a home or a business, we would respond to that location. Uh -huh. When we check the business and there's, there's nothing that happened there, we usually give an indication or a code that would say that it was. It comes out to be a false alarm. Now, many times we have a key holder, so we're able to make that determination. And then after so many false alarms, then there is a penalty for it. I, just, I don't know the exact amount on it, but okay. they would and, process. Okay, because somebody sent me an email about this asking me if this was the same as red light cameras. Is it truly enforceable? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't compare it to that. Uh, we do it now. This, okay. pro this, this portion of it, PMAM, just does that for us so we don't have to the cumbersome portion of getting the, the system in and actually having a clerk who's actually got to enter it into a system mm -hmm. and then track it. Their system actually tracks it. So all we do is our CAD system is basically the 911 system. Uh, all of that information is automatically integrated into PMAM and does the, the work for us. It simplifies our work process. Okay. I guess that makes more sense. All right, and this is the only company that can do that? Or? It's, it's a company that, because of our system that we're currently going to, which is Mark 43, it's the system that integrates with. Perfect, that's, that's all I have, thing. thank you. Yes, let's see. Who, who likes this? Who wants to speak? Eric. It's clear. Okay. She, she doesn't have anything. Okay. Okay. She was still on. Okay. Let's move along. Okay. Any, any uh, more public comments? We did have two citizens who did not wish to speak who called in opposition to the ordinance. Okay. Okay, let's call to adopt the ordinance. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. City Ordinance 73-2020 in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council confirming the final form and execution of the bond purchase agreement in connection with the issuance and sale of blank dollars, taxable limited tax refunding bond series 2020 of the City of Lafayette, State of Louisiana, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Motion is second, please. Motion by Ms. Cook, second by Mr. Nakane. The bond council has submitted an amendment to insert a dollar amount. I need a motion and second on the proposed amendment. So moved. moved by Ms. Cook, second, second by Ms. Aber. Council discussion on amendment. I said, okay, Ms. Ms. Aber. Uh, this, I don't know who would answer this question, but my question is, is under the, under this year's budget, the line item for capital bonds is zero? Are we going to have to amend it to include this, or is that CFO maybe answering that question for me, mm -hmm. Lori? And I don't know what microphone that is, but your question is more relevant to the next two okay. um, items. This item here is uh, the only debt service that is paid from the city general fund. This is a restructuring of the fire and police pension bonds. And when we introduced the proposed budget, we already had preliminary numbers for this. So I took this to the bank in the proposed budget. So we already had, had accounted for it. Uh, just as a little FYI, I know it, you, 
at this hour, you want to have all the details, right? Uh, so this refunding, it's a restructuring, something that we don't do very often where we push debt out into the future, but it did help us to give us some extra cash flow for the next couple of years as it relates to sales tax debt. So in the budget that you have, we have an additional $3 million that we made available for next year and another three million for the year after that. And even though we are restructuring this debt, we still end up with a net present value savings of over two and a half percent. So y'all know how conservative I am. I was a little bit leery entering into something like this, but the market was ripe and uh, we had a really good day. Um, so it's gonna give us some cash relief for about the first two years is a large amount of cash relief, and then that relief will go on for about eight years after that, maybe it's six years after that, and then we'll pick up regular debt service payments. Uh, so it is something we did to take advantage of the market with the low interest rates. It's something you gave us permission to do, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, we were really happy with the results. We do have bond counsel here, but uh, other than that, it really was a vanilla transaction. Okay, do you want me to re-ask my question about the budget amendment on the next one? You can if you would like. If you would like me to answer it now, I'm happy to do that also. Um, I guess for uh, procedure's sake, I'll come back to you on the next sure. one. Thank you, that's all I have. Okay, um, <laughs> any public comments? No, sir. Okay, I need a vote on the amendment. District four? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. The, the motion to amend is approved. Okay, uh, council, mid, council discussion on ordinance as amended. I see none. Ms. Wu, you made any public comments on no, the sir. ordinance as amended, okay? Vote for the council, okay. from the council, I'm sorry, question? This is the next one? Yes, the next yeah. one. We're still on, uh, still the, we're still on the oh, same one. Okay, I was about to say, yeah. we're going fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vote for the, from the council to adopt the ordinance as amended. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yeah. District 3? Yeah. District 4? Yes. The motion to amend, to adopt as amended is approved. City Ordinance 74 2020, in order to the Lafayette City Council providing for the issuance and sale of public improvement sales tax refunding bonds, Series 2020, Taxable Public Improvement Sales Tax Refunding Bond, Series 2020A, and Public Improvement Sales Tax Bond, Series 2020B, of the City of Lafayette, State of Louisiana, prescribing the form of said bonds, providing for fixing the maturities of and interest rates on said bonds, providing for the payment of said bonds, and the application of the proceeds thereof to the refunding of certain bonds of the city, providing for the sale of such bonds to the purchasers thereof, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. The motion and a second. Motion by Ms. Abair, second by Mr. Nakin. The bond council has submitted an amendment to insert a dollar amount. I need a motion and a second on the proposed amendment. Motion by Ms. Abair, second by Ms. Cook. Okay. Uh, Okay, Ms. Williams, Ms. Abair. Thank you, uh, Lori, I'm coming back to you with my original question. Okay, so this answer applies for both number nine and 10. The difference is number nine, the primary difference is number nine is the 1961 sales tax is the collateral for the debt yeah. and 1985 is uh, the, the security for number 10. And what these ordinances are doing, uh, the first part is a refunding of some outstanding debt, but the primary, the, the main purpose of this issue is the 20, both of them for a total of 50 million, each of them had about $25 million of new money for our bond program. You may recall under the last administration, we changed the way we did bonds and we entered into this consolidated bond fund and we put a hundred million dollars of bond projects on the books. But what we, we didn't borrow a hundred million dollars at one time because we knew it takes a while to spend it 
and we didn't run, we didn't want to run uh, afoul of any IRS rules. So we borrowed $25 million. Now we're borrowing 50 million and that's all gone across that 100 million that was already done about two years ago in the, in the budget. And we have about another 25 million left to go in order to finish those projects. What's important is that those projects were already approved in the budget by you. Mm -hmm. And each year when you review the budget, if you have anything in the bond program that has not been started and is no longer a priority, you should move it. And that's how you free up the bond money to add new bonds. Um, I think that probably sometime in the next few months we can reevaluate after we know what sales taxes are doing. Certainly the hurricane last week changed everything. So uh, we may have a different dynamic and a, a whole different economic situation and we may be able to enter, uh, to add some new bonds to our, to our bond program, but we're not able to do that just yet. This is still taking care of the $100 million in city bond projects that was approved a year and, and two ago. Got it. And because this is a city ordinance that the city council is voting on, these are city of Lafayette projects, correct? Yes. Can I get a list of those projects? Yes, you have that in your budget book. Uh, I'll point out the page numbers. I know you, it's only 450 pages, so oh, I, good. I'll, I'll make I sure I point memorized. that out to you. But is there a way I can, simplicity sake, get a list of that before the next budget meeting? Oh yeah, it's, it's it's just like two pages in the budget book jumbled up. Uh, email, if you don't mind yeah. emailing, that's Absolutely. Me. Thank you, that's all I have, Chairman. Thank you. Any more, co any more council discussion? None, okay. Ms. Williams, public comments on the amendment. Okay. Need a vote on the amendment? District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. yes. District one? Yes. The motion to amend is approved. Council discussion on ordinance as amended? I see none. Ms. Williams, any public comments on ordinance as amended? No, Need a vote from the council to adopt the ordinance as amended. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. The motion to adopt as amended is approved. City ordinance 75-2020 and 31st Supplemental Ordinance of the Lafayette City Council amending and supplementing Ordinance Number 3066 adopted on April 8, 1986, the General Bond Ordinance to provide for the issuance of taxable public improvement sales tax refunding bonds, Series 2020C, and the public improvement sales tax bond, Series 2020D of the Lafayette, of the City of Lafayette, State of Louisiana, Pursuant to the general bond ordinance providing for the payment of said bonds and the application of the proceeds thereof to the refunding of certain bonds of the city, providing for the sale of such bonds to the purchasers thereof, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Motion and second. Motion by Ms. Cook. Second, second by Ms. Ebear. The bond council has submitted an, an amendment to insert a dollar amount. Motion and second on the proposed amendment. Motion, Motion by Ms. Ebear. Second by Mr. Nakin. Council discussion on amendment. I see there is none. Ms. William, any public comments on amendment? Do we need a vote on the amendment? District four? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. The motion to amend is approved. Council discussion on the ordinance as amended. I see there is none. Ms. William, any public comments? Vote on the from the council to adopt the ordinance as amended. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. The motion to adopt as amended is approved. Okay, item number 11, I think Ms. Hebert has an amendment. Oh, yes. uh, Ms. Cook, I'm sorry. Ms. Cook, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Did you, did you need to read 11? You, you already read it? No, well, I, yeah, I need to read it. She needs to read it? Big head with the, okay, she go needs ahead to read it, it first, All I right, think. Go ahead and read it. City Ordinance 76 2020 in ordinance of the Lafayette City Council setting forth and designating the ad valorem tax millage rates and imposing taxes on all property subject to ad valorem taxation in the City of Lafayette and authorizing the, the assessor for the Parish of Lafayette and the tax collector for the City of Lafayette to assess and collect property taxes for 2020. 
Be it ordained by the Lafayette City Council that whereas the Lafayette City Council is the governing and taxing authority of the City of Lafayette and is empowered by law to levy and impose ad valorem taxes on all property subject to taxation in said city as shown by the assessment roll for the year 2020. And whereas the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government will include will include the revenues from those taxes in its budget for fiscal year 2020-2021, and whereas the Lafayette City Council is required by the terms of Louisiana Revised Statute 471705.A to adopt an ordinance which sets forth the, and designates the ad valorem tax millage rates for the current tax year. Whereas the Lafayette Parish Assessor has completed the 2020 reassessment of the taxable properties in the City of Lafayette, and whereas, based on the outcome of the reassessment, there are decreases in taxable values in the City of Lafayette, and now, therefore, be it further ordained by the Lafayette City Council that Section 1, all the afro described whereas clauses are adopted as per of this ordinance. Section 2, that the following millage rates are hereby levied on the 2020 tax roll on all properties subject to taxation by the City of Lafayette. General Alimony, 5.67 mills. Streets, roads, and alleys, 1435 mills. Recreation, 2.01 mills. Public buildings, 1.18 mills. Police and fire departments, 3.33 mills. Police salaries and benefits, 3.14 mills. Fire salaries and benefits, 2.09 mills. Section 3, the proper administrative officers of the City of Lafayette, State of Louisiana, be and they are hereby empowered, authorized, and directed to spread said taxes as here and above set forth upon the assessment roll of said city for the year 2020 and to make the collection of the taxes imposed for and on behalf of the taxing authority according to law and that the taxes herein levied shall become a permanent lien and privilege on all property subject to taxation as herein set forth and collection thereof shall be enforceable in the manner provided by law. Section four, the foregoing ordinance was read in full. The roll was called and on adoption thereof and the ordinance was adopted by the following votes. Section five, all ordinances and resolutions are parts thereof in conflict there herewith or are hereby repealed. Section six, this ordinance shall become effective upon signature of the Lafayette Mayor President, the elapse of 10 days after receipt by the Lafayette Mayor President without signature or veto, or upon an override of veto, whichever occurs first. Okay, Ms. Cook, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Um, all right, after much discussion, discussion with my council members, we have come to the agreement, all four of us, that I'd like to offer up an amendment to this particular ordinance to where we, instead of making an adjustment on the taxes, with that we maintain the millage rate at the 2019 millage rate. So I'd like to make that amendment, and I'll probably need uh, legal to put that in, in legal terms, but the intent is to maintain the current 2019 millage rates as we move forward. Um, understanding that this may, will, will cause some budget, fancy budget work that we're gonna to have to do moving forward, but given the economy that we're in right now, given the times that we're living in right now, we as a council did not feel we were comfortable with um, adjusting these rates any higher. So this is, um, this, is, this is kind of where we landed. So if I can get a little help from legal in terms of how that would be worded. So, this, okay. so it may be more of a um, CFO question because really what, as, from my standpoint, what I would suggest you do in terms of the amendment is simply amend this ordinance and replace the numbers that currently are, exist with the actual numbers that were in place in 2019. And Mr. Mr. Logan may have some, some additional comments. It is my opinion that that <laughs> amendment is unconstitutional under Article 7, Section 23. It's an unconstitutional amendment. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Can I have a uh, maybe something from the CFO in terms of? She's live. If she she's back in there. I mean, I have the numbers. I basically could. It's the same numbers we just from the 2019. I, I have those numbers. That if if I need to reread those numbers, is that what we need? The 2019 numbers, is that what you said? And I, that's, 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 that's I think you say you talk to legal about it, so it's good. I, if you I'm have just, the numbers. I have the numbers right here in front of me. So right. basically we would, we would bring them back to the numbers that, were, that are listed in the 2019 millage, gotcha. which are, if you right. need me to read them. 
And let's, I, let, let me say something for the record to be clear. Okay. My, my assistance on how you want to make the amendment is not to be interpreted as um, contrary or commenting at all on Mr. Logan, the city parish attorney's comments that this amendment is, in his opinion, unconstitutional. If you need additional explanation or, or something, I, I can try and help you with that. Um, but it, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with him. I'm not commenting on that comment. That's his legal opinion. I, I read the same provision in the Constitution, Article 7, Section 23, and I have to say, it appears to read as if there's a mandate in the Constitution that you need to maintain the same revenue stream which would require you to make these adjustments up. But that's the source of his, of his opinion. Okay, and I appreciate that, and I think we read that together, and it was that we, we it was mandated that we vote on either yeah, moving look, it like up I or said, down. Yeah, like, and, like I said, I was not asked to render an opinion on that, so I haven't gotten you know deep in it. I'm just telling you, my assistance to you on the amendment, please don't interpret one way or the other that I agree or disagree with the issue of is it constitutional or not. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. Okay, let me just ask you this. If we were to vote no my, on this particular ordinance, and my understanding that would zero out the millage. That's correct. And then we would have to come back and set it back to a number, which could be the 2019 numbers, is that correct? Essentially, essentially what you need to do is you need to do something in terms of levy the tax and establish whatever, okay. you know, establish your rate. I, I just wanted to clarify, you know, my, my giving you uh, assistance on the amendment. I didn't want anybody to read anything one way or the other into the other question regarding the validity of the amendment. I understand, okay. and, I, and I appreciate that. And, and I, look, I appreciate the, the legal comments as well. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Paul, I have a question for you. Sure. You're saying that you're not taking a position. I understand that. You're not taking a position. I, I didn't say that. Well, I, said, well, I mean, that's I my said, interpretation. Excuse me. Can I okay, finish? Sure. Go ahead. I said I was not prepared to address okay. that question. Right. I was not asked that question. Mm -hmm. I have not researched that question. That's what I'm telling you. And so what I'm saying is, is that by me giving assistance to the amendment, I don't want anybody to read into it one way or the other that I think the amendment is constitutional or I don't think the amendment is constitutional. Mm, that's, that's fair enough. Okay, okay. that's you. all I'm saying. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I guess in my mind, I I'm still wanna move forward with this amendment with the, with the 2019 millage numbers. Right. Um, and so I, if you need me to read those off for the purposes of this amendment? Yes. For the record, yes. yes. Okay. All right. So basically the 2019 millage rates for the Lafayette General Alimony is 5.42. Lafayette Streets, Roads and Alleys, 1.29. Lafayette Playground Recreation, 1.92. Lafayette Public Buildings, 1.13. Lafayette Police and Fire Departments, 3.18. Police Salaries, Lafayette, 3.00. And Lafayette Fire Salaries, 2.0. For a total of 17.94. And those are the 2019 rates in my amendment. Would like to read that we move forward with those rates. Um, we keep those same rates. All we, that's all we need. Uh, you have a second? Did somebody? Okay, second. So that's where we are. Uh, are there any council discussion? Let me see. And we have no uh, public comment. Any public comments? Amendment. No, okay, it's called on the vote. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District one? Yes. The motion to amend is approved. Okay. We go to the ordinance, uh, the ordinance as amended. Okay. And this, if there was any council discussion. Yeah. And that's not on his chair agenda because no, we kind of flipped the script right. there. But um, or any council discussion any council on the discussion? ordinance as amended? Okay. No public comment. No public so comment. we can call for the vote. Okay. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. The motion to adopt as amended is approved. 
Let's move on. Announcement of vacancy on board and commission. Cindy, please read vacancies. A vacancy will exist on the public on the People's Safety Initiative Board as of September 1st, 2020. This is a two-year term. Applicants must be medical doctors. A vacancy will exist on the People's Safety Initiative Board as of September 1st, 2020. This is a four-year term. Applicants must be community organizers. A vacancy will exist on the Lafayette Waterworks District South Board as of September 1st, 2020. This is a three-year term. Applicants must be district residents. Individuals wishing to submit a resume for the above volunteer vacancies must be a registered voter and a resident of Lafayette Parish. Yearly ethics training for all appointees is required as is financial disclosure under certain circumstances. Resumes are to be forwarded to Veronica L. Williams, Clerk of the Council, PO Box 4017-C, Lafayette, Louisiana 70502, or email to bclafayette at lafayettela.gov no later than noon, Tuesday, September 15th, 2020, with appointments to be made at the October 6, 2020 regular meeting of the Lafayette City Council. Resume submissions are public record. Okay. Consider appointments by council as a whole to board and commission. Senator, please read the appointment. Amendment to appointments to the Lafayette Science Museum Advisory Board made at the August 4th, 2020 City Council meeting to have the incumbent appointment date in sync with the current appointment. Jeremy J. Sweeney as of December 1st, 2020, four-year term. Brandy Clay as of February 1st, 2019, four-year term. Council discussion? See none. We need a motion and a second. I mean, I'm sorry, a motion and a second. Motion by Mr. Nakin, second by Ms. Cook. And what this is, is a correction on the terms. When, okay. when the appointments were made, right. you guys put, put them in different spots okay. and, and at different term limits. So now we got to kind of correct it. And some of them were already seated. So now we have to adjust this, the term limits. Okay. Council discussion? I see there's none. Any public comments? No, sir. Call for the vote. District 2. Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District one? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. Um, appointment to the Hyman Performing <coughs> Arts Center and Frim F. Bustani Convention Center Board for the remainder of an unexpired four-year term through November 30th, 2023. Resumes received for consideration are from Cynthia Bernard, Leanne Broussard, and Ted Richard. There is no incumbent. I need a, a nomination. Okay, Mr. Narcan, nominate Ms. Bernard. Any other nomination? I see there's none. Council discussion? Any public comments? No, sir. Let's call for the vote. District three? Yeah. District four? Bernard. District one? Bernard. District two? Bernard. Cynthia Bernard is appointed. Appointment to the Evangelion Theory Redevelopment Team as of January 1st, 2020. This is a four-year term. And uh, now the, the resumes received for consideration are from Noel Brandon, Bradley Shatlin, Erica Melanson Fox, and Jamal Taylor. I'd like to nominate Ms. Fox, Erica Fox. Any other nomination? And there is no incumbent. Council discussion? Any public comments? No, sir. Call for the vote. District 4? Fox. District 1? Fox. District 2? Fox. District 3? Fox. Erica Malasa Fox is appointed. Appointment to the Avenger 3 redevelopment team as of September 1st, 2020. This is a four year term. There is no incumbent. The resume received for consideration are Noel Brandon, Bradley Shatlin, Erica Fox, and Jamal Taylor. And it won't be Erica Fox since she's oh, yes, right. appointed she's in a previous she already appointed. One. So it'll be Jamal Taylor, Bradley Shatlin, and Noel Brandon. And okay, Shatlin, I'd like to nominate Mr. Jamal Taylor. So there's two nominations on the floor, Jamal Taylor and who you nominated? Bradley Shatlin, yeah. And we would Call need three votes for any selection. Okay. Call for the vote. District one. Mr. Taylor. District two? Chardelaine. District three? Chardelaine. District four? Chardelaine. Brady Chardelaine is appointed. 
Appointment to the People's Safety Initiative Board for a two-year term effective September 1st, 2020. Applicants must be dietitians. The resume received for considerations from Ms. Jennifer Hightower Jackson. There is no incumbent. Nomination, please. Dr. Jackson, <laughs> council discussion. There's none. Public comments? No, sir. Call for the vote. District 2? District 3? Jackson. District 4? Jackson. District 1? Dr. Jackson. Jennifer Hightower Jackson is appointed. Appointment to the Transportation Policy Commission, the governing authority of the Metropolitan Planning Organization, for an indefinite term as of September 1st, 2020. Before nominations are made, I know we go quick with that. We do have speakers and they, they get to speak before a nomination is made. Is Melissa Lulin in it here? She's, she left. And we have um, one speaker who did not wish to speak who is in support and it's Roddy Bajeron, he's here. But he did not wish to speak, just support himself. Okay, you can move forward with nominations. Okay, the resume, okay, nomination please. Any other nomination? Okay, Mr. Bajron has been uh, nominated. Any council discussion? Public comment? No, call, sir. Call we'll for the vote. Right. District 3? Bergeron. District 4? Bergeron. District 1? Roddy. District 2? Bergeron. Roddy Bergeron is appointed. Okay, appointments. Appointments by council members, mayor, president, and or any other direct appointment authority. Uh, number 22. Andy Nalkin, District 2, appointed Jennifer J. Bernard to the Lafayette Recreation Advisory Commission for a four years term, effective August 1st, 2020. The police department appointed Paul Mouton to the Fire and Police Civil Service Board for a three years term effective July 26, 2020. The fire department appointed Mickey Broussard to the Fire and Police Civil Service Board for a three years term effective July 26, 2020. Okay. Introductory ordinance. I need a motion and a second from the council to introduce ordinance items 25 and 26 in global. Motion by Mr. Knocking, second by Ms. Bear. Senate, please read. City Ordinance 78 2020, in order to the Lafayette City Council amending the fiscal year 1920 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing revenues in the amount of $84,075 received from the Louisiana Commission on Law Enforcement and appropriating within the Lafayette Police Department. City Ordinance 79 2020, in order to the Lafayette City Council authorizing the amending of the fiscal year 1920 operating and capital budgets of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing anticipated revenues in the amount of $7,129,789 from the Federal Transit Administration Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Cares Act, Public Law Number 116-136 through the Section 5307 Urbanized Aerial Formula Program at 100% federal share for use within the Public Works Department Transit Division. Any comments from the public concern above introductory ordinance? We did have one citizen, did not wish to speak in support of item number 26 with reference to the Federal Transit Administration Coronavirus Aid Relief. No council. other comments. Okay, council discussion? Public comments? No. Need a vote introduced in global items 25 and 26. District 4? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? District 3? Yes. The motion to introduce is approved. Join the city council meeting. Thank you. Good night. All right. Yes. Oh, yeah, we got this. Oh. I need to cut this off.